drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brew Blood. Episode 120 of Brew Bloods. We are at Brain Dead Brewing today. Already 120, too. Already 120, I know. And Congrats. we're through 120 episodes, and Mark still doesn't realize when he has the headphones on, he talks super quiet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, go to hell. I was like, I can't hear him. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tend to get yeah. NPR voice when I have the you headphones do. on, because it sounds like, really loud to me. Like, this is hello. episode 120. It's episode 120 of Brew Bloods. Thank you. And anyways, we're at Brain Dead Brewing today for the... Right by the street. We need you to talk loud. I'm sorry. For the Women of Craft Beer Panel 2017, uh, they've done this, I don't know how many years now. This is their third year. Third year. Yeah. And by the way, Wait Jennifer's here. Yay. Uh, Jennifer the Bearded Lady. And appropriately so, since we're here for the Women of Craft Beer Panel, we should announce that Jennifer is part of Brew Bloods now. Yes. She is now Whenever a, she's a, a, a Brew Blood. She'll, I don't know. She's at least a part-timer she, minimum. She's, yeah. a, she's a cell in the Brew Blood. Yeah. I need to be initiated, which is apparently <laughs> getting a badass shirt. So that's pretty go. much it. Yeah, yeah I think that's it's pretty four much years. it. It's I'm not sorry. a very harsh. Four that. years. I'm like maybe it's three or four years. I know. Sorry. Anyways, we have so a very track, simple. ADD. Yeah. yeah, we're not yeah. we're not too much into the hazing. No, no. Cool. It was more okay, for good. each other, but that was a long time ago. Oh whoa! Uh, whoa! Did it have to do with Jack's holes? <laughs> yeah. Just... yeah, Jack with precision. Sometimes. Uh, yeah, that's okay. So today, it still does sometimes. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, we like to recreate sometimes. Sweet. Yeah, so Jennifer's gonna be contributing to the show more often, as much as she. Is able to hell yeah. The uh, she's about to move to the little D as so, we talked yeah, about last week. So yeah, moving to the little D with Brian. Brian being the little D. Yep. Yeah. From, we're, uh, we're in big D right now. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Moving to the little D there. in yeah. six months or so with a newly uh, a fresh house. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which, that's a really weird. <laughs> way to describe a new I know. <laughs> a fresh pad. A fresh house. It's a fresh pad, yo. Freshly minted it's a house. Fresh pad, yeah. Which uh, Dustin will probably vomit again to in the toilet at some point in the future when he gets way too drunk. We should definitely do a Brewbloods uh, podcast in my house. Not, that works for me, absolutely. Yeah. I have not been to Denton since college days, so. Get wow. some of the whales out, maybe, yeah. from the yeah. closet? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah sounds, like, sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, you're yeah. like, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> there may not be a podcast going on, but no, we're no, drinking. We, we've done that drunk before, and that is not very comprehensible. No, <laughs> no it's, it's fun for us, but it's not fun for anybody for us, else. Yeah. So this is the, uh, like I said, the North Texas Beer Week, Brain Dead Brewing, Craft Beer, Women of Craft Beer 2017, and I think there were 18, there are 18 ladies here from various breweries, yeah. right? Eight, 17, 18 ladies, something like that. There's quite a bit, like at least 12 to like 16, I think. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't count, but I there are over 10 right. and under 100 ladies yes. from various breweries I across. I want to say 18's too many, but it, there's yeah. a lot. region, actually. We yeah. got some people from Texas, and we got some people from Lazine. Yep, and yep. Odell, which is in the region. Yep. Uh, yeah, so we're going to hear from them. This first part is going to be the intros to everybody's participating in the panel. And then the second part will be the Q&A. Uh, this thing, I guess, is probably going to go almost two hours. So we'll, we'll see. We'll split it up in two episodes. Hell so yeah. Yeah, so here it is, the 27 <laughs> Women of Craft Beer panel for North Texas Beer Week at Brain Dead Brewing Company. Boom, go women. here at Brain Dead. Welcome to North Texas uh, cra- Women in Craft Beer. Um, we host this every year. This is our third year and we're all really excited. We've doubled in size since last year on our panel. So that means that we're, uh, we're effectively taking over the world, as Nellie would say. Uh, this is Nellie. Um, pretty much, uh, we're going to be giving a rundown. Um, every lady's going to be talking for a few minutes, talking about their history, the beer they brought. Um, you guys can be jotting down questions as everyone is speaking. Um, then we'll take a short break after all of the ladies have had a chance to talk about herself for a minute. All right, first up we got Brittany from 903. I had this like sick feeling that I would be the first up tonight. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you, Brain Dead, for hosting this event. Uh, I want to say I'm honored to be included with all of these amazing women uh, on this panel. Uh, Yeah, and thank you again for coming out and hearing us talk about being women in the craft beer industry. Um, So, I'll give you my biography. Uh, I'm Brittany Elise LaFollette. That's Elise with an A. Uh, I'm from Sherman, Texas. That's a town, yes, ma'am, that's a town an hour north of Dallas. Uh, It's 
small populations, pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I went to college up there. I lived there for about 18 years, and then I just recently moved to Dallas. Um, I'm the daughter of a funeral director. I lived in a funeral home when I was a kid, so if that kind of illuminates my personality and my weird quirks, uh, it's all a part of my, my DNA. Um, <laughs> I love cats. I love craft beer. Uh, I'm a Sagittarius, but I really don't believe in like zodiac signs, so that's a contradiction in and of itself. Um, trying to think, like, okay, so... My path to craft beer was pretty cool. So I discovered beer in college, like a lot of, a lot of college students. Uh, my first craft beer, though, like that I really fell in love with was Stone IPA. It was like my senior year. Uh, and then I got the hot bug pretty big. Uh, and then I went down the rabbit hole. So... <laughs> Uh, after college, I was kind of like a lost soul, not really sure what I wanted to do with myself or my life, that like, that mid-20s, early-20s crisis that you enter into where you're like, I'm a failure! Uh, so I felt that, but I always had craft beer as like, almost like a comfort and or a distraction. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I actually got super lucky. I got a professional mentor uh, by the name of Stacy Rake, who kind of took me in, uh, and then I was, uh, I was, I was cultivated. I was groomed. Uh, I was given confidence, uh, and I started volunteering for 903 while I was working at Stacy's agency. So I would do demos on the weekend. Uh, I was a volunteer for a year before I took a full-time position. Uh, as a brand ambassador. And so this week is actually my two-year anniversary with 903 as a brand ambassador. And honestly, in the three years that I've been working for 903 and have been involved in the industry, uh, I've seen so many more women come out, participate in festivals, uh, get excited about craft beer. Um, that's something I certainly think about quite a bit. Uh, whenever I'm doing my events, I think about what will appeal to women, uh, primarily because like any opportunity that I have to talk to women about craft beer is an opportunity to empower their passion uh, and to tell them that they have a place in craft beer. So for me, it's a really badass opportunity to get people, to get women specifically excited about beer. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, real fast, so uh, I don't know what my... Where, where, how am I doing on time? Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking I'd do. Uh, so the beer that we brought tonight is Mandarina Jolie. It's an IPA. It's available in cans behind the bar uh, or out of my trunk. No, just kidding. <laughs> JK. Um, so it is an IPA brewed with five different hops including the namesake hop, Mandarina Bavaria. Uh, so Mandarina Jolie, five hops, super citrusy with a nice tailored bitter finish. It's not overwhelming on the IPA, like bitterness, which is really cool because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of beyond that um, in my own personal preference. Uh, yeah, it's 6.7% alcohol, 65 IBUs. Uh, IPAs are super cool because in beer production, only female hop plants are used. So, IPAs are girl power beers. Uh, how many of you like IPAs? I hate them. <laughs> I'm like allergic or something. Uh, well, cool. So, I think that's my time. Uh, thank you all so much for making me go first. Drop it. People like it when you do that. All right, next up we got Mara from Alesmith. She drove up from Austin today just for this event, you guys. That's awesome. All right. Well, um, my biography isn't as interesting because I didn't live in a funeral home or anything, but um, <laughs> I am from Los Angeles. That's pretty uh, interesting, I guess. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of sad today. Um, anyway, so I've been in the beverage industry for about a decade. Um, I started in college. I just aged myself. It's cool. Um, 
I used to drive the little Red Bull Mini Cooper, handing out Red Bulls. So that was how I started working in the beverage industry. Did that for a couple of years. Um, did some alcohol promo stuff. And then um, started working in like natural products, functional beverages, and then uh, fell in love with beer. <laughs> um, I went to college in Chicago, and I think the first beer that I fell in love with, oh, that's the, okay, well, there's, I'll just give you categories. Okay, so like, I remember I found Triple Carmelite, and I was like, so in love. Delirium Tremens, it just, you know, we all start, and really, uh, I think, Belgians really spark our interest for a lot of us, right? And then it comes full circle because then we don't want them anymore. Then we want hops, which was Racer 5 for me. Um, this was like, once again, 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> and then um, what else do I love? Left Hand Milk Stout. We had it out there at the time. So those were some of my favorites. So about five years ago, or a little more, I started working for a brewery called Golden Road. So that's female-owned. Uh, I worked for them for three and a half years, and I launched most of the California market. So I left Los Angeles, where I was born and raised, and had returned after college, and then moved back to Northern California. So I sold Golden Road in um, L.A., in Santa Barbara, in San Diego, in Sacramento, in Tahoe. It took me to a bunch of different places, as beer will, I tell you. It'll take you everywhere you want to go. Um, and then uh, the glory days were over, and we sold. they sold to Anheuser-Busch. And, you know, uh, that just wasn't the path that was right for me. Uh, so I started working for a brewery called Belching Beaver in San Diego. Uh, worked for them for about a year. And then I got um, a phone call to work for what had always been one of my favorite breweries in the world, which is Ale Smith. And uh, they needed someone in Texas. And um, I was like, all right, I like Austin. So I moved to Austin about uh, almost a year ago. And I now manage Texas. I go out to Kansas. And I also manage the state of Georgia. So I have three states that I go visit. And what I love about this, about my job, about being, I guess, a traveling beer rep, which I've been doing um, for a while now, is that every beer community is so different. So um, I've gotten to see like the LA beer scene in its infancy and how different that was than Northern California. And then you go to Atlanta where Mitch Steele, who is the brewmaster of Stone, I'm sure a lot of you know, left and is building a brewery there. And I was always so curious, like, why did Mitch Steele pick Atlanta? He must know something. Beer scene must be great out there. So... Um, so I talked to him about it because I um, <laughs> went out there. Then all of a sudden, Georgia became my market. And you know what? They are doing some really great things there. And I go up to Kansas, and um, so many breweries have been inspired by Boulevard. So it takes just, I think, like one really good local or regional brewery to then spawn off all these others. So there's a lot of... Um, breweries in San Diego that wouldn't exist if it weren't for Alesmith. Um, Alesmith has been around 22 years. Um, we have some really strong roots in home brewing, which is another thing that I love because it really brings community together. People that brew at home or brew with their friends. And a lot of times it's because they were inspired by one beer that they think, maybe can I make something like that? So um, it's really fun. And we... Um, we have our owner and um, brewmaster is a master beer judge. So we try to brew a lot of things true to style. We have three guys at Alesmith who have um, been, acted, been active president of one of the largest homebrew clubs, um, or one of the most well-respected, I guess. It's called Quaff. It's called Quality of Ale Fermentation something. Anyway, so they're really active in the community. And something that's wonderful about the San Diego beer scene, and I'm sure Dallas is similar. I'm just still kind of new here, so I can't really say. But um, Stone and Alesmith, like, we open up our labs to each other. We compare things. We test beer for each other. So um, that's what's really special about craft beer. And that's why um, when, I, when my first company got purchased by Anheuser-Busch, it was like, you know, it's just not as special. So I like working for... Um, truly independent brewery. Um, the beer that we are pouring tonight is Speedway Stout. Um, it's, the, it's a variant, so it's called Nibs and Beans. So interesting fact about Speedway, um, it's a beautiful beer, first of all, but 
Um, Ale Smith just took home our 20th GABF medal this year. So we've won 20 so far, which is pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I don't have anything to do with that, but thank you so much. <laughs> Um, so what's interesting about Speedway is that it's our, it's the beer that we're most well known for, but we've never won a medal for it because we don't enter it into competitions. We don't enter it into competitions because, it, um, we're real sticklers about true to style coming from, you know, a beer judge background and Speedway doesn't fit into a style category. It is an oatmeal stout. It is a Russian Imperial stout. It is a coffee stout. So we just don't fi feel that it really fits um, something that would win an award for being representative of a style. So it always gets voted one of the best beers in the world, but it doesn't win any awards because we don't put it out there, too. We just kind of put it out there to have fun and play with it. So we have this event every year called Speedway Grand Prix. Um, it's uh, where we do dozens of different variants of Speedway, and they're all really interesting, like Waffle Speedway or Hatch Chili Speedway. Um, really creative things that we come up with. And so people kind of vote for what they love, and then it goes into um, maybe going, maybe we consider it for large production, which is what happened with Nibs and Beans. It is, um, it was a fan favorite at one of our Speedway Grand Prix. It is made with cacao nibs and vanilla beans. It is very decadent and delicious. Um, let me give you another fun fact about Speedway, because I just love this beer so much. It's so complex. Um, it's actually got 80 IBUs in it. So there's a ton of hops in there to make it real bitter, even though the coffee makes it super roasty already. I wouldn't even call it bitter, um, but there's a lot of hops in there. Uh, there's a ton of oats, a, a lovely amount of chocolate malt, and then with the addition of the cacao nibs, it makes it a little bit more of a dessert variant of Speedway because original Speedway is just real roasty and not sweet. It's actually a really great breakfast beer, I think. So enjoy this variant. It's very rare. Bottles don't make it out of the brewery, and only a few kegs leave San Diego. So I really hope that you get to try some tonight, and thanks for listening to me talk so much. <laughs> All right, guys. Next we have April, who I believe loves to be called Ape. <laughs> From Austin East Ciders. Hey guys, thanks so much for being here. I will tell you, I'm not a good public speaker, so Brittany and Maura are already like way did more than I'm ever going to think about doing. Okay, hi. Is that better? I'm scared of the microphone. <laughs> so I'm April R. from Austin East Siders. I have been with Austin East Siders for about a year now. Previous to that, thanks guys. Previous to that, um, well, I'll just tell you, I grew up in Alabama joined the Army to get out of Alabama, <laughs> and then got sent back to Alabama and said, no, I don't want to be here. So then I left and went to Memphis, and then I went to Austin. When I moved to Austin, I started home brewing in 2001. Um, I thought I wanted to be a nurse, so I went to nursing school and started volunteering, or sorry, not volunteering, working at a place called Whippin in Austin. Uh, really cool place. Uh, once the owner found out that I homebrew, he immediately wanted me to start a brewery there. So I was a co-founder of Namaste Brewing, which then turned into Kamala Brewing. Um, we won a GABF our first year, even being there. It was my recipe. It was a really cool ESB with um, Earl Grey tea. So better and better you'd think would be not very good, but it was actually awesome. Uh, <laughs> I left Austin about five years ago and moved to Dallas. And I really wanted to continue brewing, but unfortunately, no one was hiring at the time. So I started working for Whole Foods. I was a beer buyer there for about four and a half years. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep looking at you. <laughs> yes, Greta also worked at the store that I was from as well. So I spent about four and a half years at Whole Foods and uh, just being the beer buyer and learning all the cool places. A lot of people here. Yeah, actually, Marla. Yeah. Chanel, now Abita, everybody. Oh, everybody's here. Hi. <laughs> so I guess what I'm getting at was I never thought that I, coming from like loving beer and brewing my own since for a long time, never, ever, ever thought I'd work for a cidery. I didn't even like cider. When I first got offered the job a few years ago, I said, I don't like cider, no. And then a year or two passed, and I was like, well, I'm maxed out here at Whole Foods, so I guess I should learn something. So I tried some ciders from Austin East Ciders, and I was like, damn, this is some good shit. 
I actually like it. It's not sugary sweet. Then I learned more about it, and I learned that there's difference in apples and how you make cider, and that most United States cideries use dessert eating apples. Those are sweet, and you ferment them, and then they're really sweet, and you don't want to eat it or drink it or anything. But we use actual cider apples. We get our apples from Europe. Um, people wonder why we do that, and it's because during Prohibition, everybody made cider at home. And the government said, oh, no, you can't do that. We're going to chop down all the cider trees. So we have to outsource to Europe to get our apples, which makes our cider nice and dry and drinkable and palatable that everybody can enjoy. So they changed my mind. I agreed to work for them. Now I work for a cidery, but I'm still a beer girl at heart. Um, and today we have the original dry on draft, and we also have the blood orange that came out this year in May. So we, like I said, we get our apples from Europe. We also, for this blood orange cider, we cold press the blood oranges. So you get the peel, you get the juice, you get everything in the blood orange in the cider. They're both 5% alcohol, and they're all made in Austin. And that's all I got. Thanks. <laughs> Next, we have Daytona from Celis. Woo! Woo! All right. Woo! Woo! Is this better? Can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. So, hey. I'm Daytona Camps, and I work for Celis Brewery. I am uh, one of the brewers there, but also along with many other hats. I, uh, so what we have on tap right now is our Celis Grand Cru. Um, it's a Belgian triple, and it's actually one of the originals that we brewed in uh, 1967. And so we, uh, careful though, it's, it's 8.6. I'm telling you, after two, you, you can't drive. And so um, I'll give a brief history on, uh, on Celis Brewery. And so Pierre Celis is the one that started the or revived the wit style beer so um in 1957 his next door neighbor thompson had the last brewery uh who made the wit style beer and uh and so he was an older gentleman and pierre Celis was about you know 17 at the time so he would help out you know manual work lifting and all that jazz and so throughout the years he learned how to brew the wit style beer and so uh, when Thompson wanted to retire and shut down the brewery, um, you know, that was the last brewery in, in Belgium, uh, Hogarth in Belgium, that had the, that style of beer. And so everyone was very upset. You know, you take away your special kind of beer, that wit beer, of course you're going to be, you know, pretty pissed off. So everyone kept coming to him and saying, you know how to brew the wit beer. Come on, please, please brew it. And so he was like, well, actually, I found some bottles left over. So let's go have a little tasting. And so him and his friends, they would drink all those beers, and they're like, see, after eight years, it's still really good. And so he turned to them, and he was like, well, actually, I, I made these. And uh, so all his friends were pretty upset. They're like, you just lied to us. How, why would you do that? And of, of course, I had a lie because, you know, if it, was, if it sucked, you still would have said it's good. And so after that, that's when he knew he had, a, he had something good. So he converted his, uh, his milk stable into a brewery. Um, in 1960s, and he started brewing the, the wit beer in his backyard. And he s could, maxed out demand, and so um, he bought an abandoned lemonade factory and called that Decluse, uh, which Decluse means um, it's an it's area in Belgium where young people would hang out and have a lot of fun. So it, it made sense to call it that. And still maxed out, couldn't keep up with demand, uh, I mean, it was so much demand, so high. And so, um, unfortunately, in 85, a fire burned down half the brewery. And so, InBef came around and was like, hey, we'll help you rebuild this brewery for you. Because all the money went towards the brewery. I mean, he didn't keep up with insurance because, you, I mean, that's the last thing you think about. And... Uh, so the brewery was revamped, and it was beautiful, state-of-the-art brewery. And uh, in, you know, the 80s, um, you know, unfortunately, a bigger company has a bigger say. So they try to, you know, cheapen everything, make it a little not as, as good quality. And so he was upset with that and uh, sold it to MBEF, and now they make Hogarden, 
That's what it was called. It renamed Ho Garden. And uh, he turned around and, and told his daughter, Christine, he was like, hey, let's open up a brewery in Austin. And she said, hell yeah, let's do it. And uh, so in 90, they bought land in the 91 construction. In 92, Celis Brewery was open, and we were the first craft brewery in Texas. And uh, yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and, uh, and so, I mean, again, maxed out of demand. I mean, the people, there was still a lot of education involved because people come around. They're like, hey, Mr. Pierre, your, your beer is cloudy. That's not right. And she so was like, well, no, that's on purpose because of protein and da 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 And um, it was a fun experience. And, of course, you know, nowadays it's a whole lot. A lot has changed. And so in 95, we partnered up with Miller because, of course, you're going to trust a guy in a cowboy hat saying, oh, we'll help, you know, expand your distribution. And um, so it sounded good at the time. So, so we partnered up with Miller. And then same thing happened as InBef. They tried to cheapen everything. And so we sold it to them in 2000. And then a year later, they shut it down. So for over 17 years, we've been trying to get the brewery back up and running. And so now, as of June, we're officially open in Austin. <laughs> and uh, so we got a brand new, you know, beautiful location. It's on Metric and Rutland. Uh, you guys have to come check it out because... We have the you know state of the art equipment just to make sure everything is as consistent and and you know as similar as it was back in the day. But also we brought back all of my grandfather's old equipment, you know copper kettles and an open mash tun and giant fooders, you know giant giant barrels. Uh, and we want to have that as a working museum, and we want people to come in and and brew with us like they did in the back back in the old days. And so that's that project's about a year out, but. We'll have a you know a beer garden outside and a lot of stuff. So you guys have to come check it out, and I, I hope you guys enjoy our beer. <laughs> but seriously, be careful. It's it's high ABV. True story. Who Garden was what got me into craft beer. That was the first beer I ever tasted that I enjoyed. Um, next we're gonna go with Greta. <laughs> From the Lakewood. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, I have to give you a fair warning real quick. I literally walked off of a plane at 2.30 this afternoon. I came in from New Orleans. I was there for Halloween. I'm almost here. I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> while we were there, though, I want to tell you, I drank, we drank a ton of Great Raft while we were there. So awesome. Thank you for making fantastic beer. Um, so, I am Greta Leverett. Uh, I have officially been in this industry for four years now. It'll be four years in November. Um, I want to take it back a little bit, though. Uh, I was originally in sales. I was selling uh, gaming and computer peripherals for uh, companies that you might know, like Logitech and SanDisk and ATI. And if it goes in a computer, I've sold it. In uh, about 2010, the industry kind of wasn't doing real hot. Uh, and I had a friend that worked at Whole Foods, and she was like, hey, you look like you need a job. And I was like, yeah, I could use a job. So she hired me, and I started working at Whole Foods. I was uh, at first a cashier, and I always kind of peered my head over to where the beer and wine was. And I was like, what's going on over there? And uh, about six months into it, they figured out that I was interested. And they brought me on, and I became... Don't tell anybody. I was the wine buyer. Uh, <laughs> I actually worked in the wine department, but I was the backup beer. I helped a lot in the beer department because I was so fascinated because I really do feel that beer and wine, and please don't boo me off the stage, but I think beer and wine are the same thing in a lot of ways. They are liquids that are fermented to taste like something else. You take something natural and wonderful, and you ferment it, and you get these beautiful flavors. And there's actually a lot of similarities between beers and wine. Things that are false in wine, we actually want in beers. Like, we want that nice sour note for those uh, that bretonomyosis gives us. You get that in wine, they're like, that's bad. Uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I actually worked there. I was uh, there for three-ish years, almost four. And um, I got my level two sommelier. So, uh, <laughs> so I drank a lot. That's what that means. I drink a lot. Uh, and about, about a year before I left, maybe a year and a half, I started meeting these people that were coming in, um, and they were doing some shopping with their family. And uh, 
got to chatting and they saw that I was real excited about the beer and I was like, hey man, we just got 120 in. Like I got some in the back. You want some? I saved it for you. Like, you know how that goes because all of us have had that. We've all gone into stores going, hey man, you got that good stuff. Uh, <laughs> so I befriended these guys and uh, one day they brought in a growler. They'd been brewing in their, their garage. Um, they brought a growler in and they were like, hey, we know you got a pretty good palate. We want you to taste something. And I said, is there alcohol in it? I'm in. Uh, so they poured a little bit in a glass, and we, we kind of sat at the bar at Whole Foods. If you've been to Lakewood Whole Foods, I love that bar. <laughs> um, <laughs> I still frequent it pretty regularly. Um, but we sat down, got some glasses, got some tasters, and this beautiful, like, opaque, dark liquid came out. And there was this gorgeous caramel head, and it was just, God, it was beautiful. And I smelled it, and I was like, ooh, that's coffee and caramel and chocolate, and oh, that smells so good what is this? They're like, just try it. Tell us what you think. So I took a swig and I was just like, guys, what is this? I want to, what, tell me, I want to drink a lot of this. And they said, well, we're thinking about opening a brewery. We're thinking about calling this beer Temptress. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> and I kind of went, okay guys. So I know you only know me as a Whole Foods employee, but I have 12 years of sales experience I want to sell this beer. This beer is going to change the face of Dallas. People are going to love this beer. And they were like, well, we're not quite there yet. Just kind of pump the brakes. We're looking maybe five years. We'll start hiring some people on. And I went, okay, what can I do? Well, you know, what days are you off? Well, I'm off uh, during the week and I'm off Saturdays. And as that friendship progressed, I figured out ways I could fill myself in at the brewery. Uh, my now husband and I used to ru- like help run the bottling line. Um, one of my fondest memories is uh, the owner, Wim Benz, and I putting gloves on the top of the bottles and singing the theme, we're going to do it. Uh, <laughs> it got old after a minute, but we did it quite a bit. It was fun. Um, and then I also started volunteering in the tap room. We were only open on Saturdays for about three hours. And uh, me and I don't know how many of y'all know Stephanie Roethlisberger. Another amazing woman in this industry, by the way. Been there a very long time. Um, she and I were the first two people to ever pour beers. I could pour over her because, you know, she's only about this tall. So I could pour over her and she could pour under me. <laughs> so there's a lot of photos of that running around. And I started working there on the weekends. I mean, every, every spare moment I had, I was like, what can I do to help? And about a year in, they said, hey, uh, you sure you want to come work for us? And I was like, yeah, I'm interested. So... Um, myself and they claim it's around 100 people submitted resumes. I honestly don't know the number. Um, They made me go through the same process everybody else had. They knew me. They knew what I did. um, And I still went second, third interviews. And at the end of the third interview, they're like, well, we need another two weeks. I'm sitting there going, come on, guys. Like, friends. (laughs) And uh, as I was driving home, they called me. They were like, hey, uh, so do you really want to work for us? And I was like, yeah. I can't imagine being anywhere else right now. Like, this is, this feels like home, and it has. And they said, well, we'd like to offer you a job. And I went, are you sh- me? Oh. So I shouldn't say that to my new bosses, huh? And they were like, we know you. You're fine. We're not shitting you. Yes, we'd like to hire you. So uh, I started working at the end of November in uh, 2013, and we had only been open since 2012. So it's been a, wow. Started out as a sales rep. <laughs> That's a hard life, guys. Like, these, these ladies and everybody in this industry, these people that are feet on the street, you don't realize how much they work. Everybody thinks, oh, this is really cool. You get to go and have beers and have fun. Um, I was putting in like 70 to 80 hours a week. My, uh, my husband almost divorced me over it at one point. He was like, hey, I don't know what you look like anymore. And I went, oh, everybody in the beer industry does, though. It's not good. <laughs> you can see me on Facebook. I check in. Um, so... <laughs> But feet on the street, man, that's a, it's an amazing job doing demos over the weekends. You know, one day a week off, you're super excited, um, especially as a startup brewery. And we've got, we've got some other startups that have, we've come from the ground, you know, and we've really, we've really done some amazing progress. And some of the people that have been laying the groundwork, I mean, like, Celis is an amazing example of that, too. Like, there's a lot of breweries here that have been here for a long time, and they're the ones that laid the groundwork for us to even thrive. So it's pretty awesome to see, like, the, the footsteps that we're all following in. Um, so I started out as a sales rep, and then I got, let's see, I got promoted to sales manager. They put me in charge of stuff, guys. Like, is that nervous? See, I'm nerve-wracking about it. Uh, and I've been doing that for about a year and a half now. And then I started working all over North Texas. We are still not fully across Texas. We're just, uh, 
we're all over the north. We're in Austin, Corpus, and uh, Bryan College Station, and that is literally it. And we're just nice and slowly growing. We enjoy it. It's a nice pace to be at. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the beer we have tonight. So we brought... All right, so who knows Temptress? I love it. You guys that didn't raise your hands, I'm going to find you. Uh, <laughs> so that's our Imperial Milk Stout. Uh, like I said, that beer changed my life. The first taste of that beer on a growler, I was just like, this is, where I, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, so we took Temptress and made these really cool variants. You might have seen some of them like raspberry, French Quarter, Sin Mint. Uh, we also do a little thing called Bourbon Barrel Temptress. I don't know if anybody's heard of it. I hear it's a drain pour. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> if anybody's stood in line for that beer, you know it's not. <laughs> um, we also make a beer called Mole Temptress. Now, Mole Temptress is, uh, let's see. So it's a Temptress. It has four different Mexican chilies in it. It's Wasillo, Oaxaca, Chipotle, and Ancho. Uh, and then it also has cinnamon and cacao nibs. Um, we were using, we were teamed up a little bit with Dude Sweet when we were initially doing the canal nibs. I don't know if we're doing that now, but we always try to reach out to local people for that. Um, but then, not only did we make this amazing beer with this beautiful warming spiciness that has some chocolate and cinnamon, and it's just, oh, it's good. We thought, let's get crazy with the cheese whiz. Why don't we take all of these variants and put them in different barrels and barrel age them? So this is a bourbon barrel aged mole temptress. Um, it comes in at a just a nice, pleasant 13%. Uh, <laughs> some of the professionals can do more than two. I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> but I do hope you guys get a chance to try it. We released this a little while ago. These guys were nice enough to hold on to some, so it's actually not even currently in the market. It is keg only. We do not have bottles of it. So I encourage you to try it if you haven't yet. Um, like I said, it's, it's one of the most, I think it's one of the most dynamic, and it has just so many things going on with it. So uh, I hope you guys get to try it. Thanks very much for letting me stand here and talk this much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> now we're going to welcome Stephanie Meyer. Woo! Also from Lakewood. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Meyer. I'm with Lakewood Brewing. I have been in the beer industry in Texas for nine years. Um, I'm one of the old ladies of beer. They are kind enough to they kind, are kind enough to invite me back every year. I do national chain accounts for Lakewood, so that's kind of the holy grail for the beer business because you get to work in like sweatpants every day from home. And, you know, it's just, it's a lot of computer work. You don't, you know, you're not necessarily out in the market anymore um, doing demos and special events, except when you you're get invited to very cool things like this. Um, I, not a whole lot to tell about me. Like I said, I've, I've been in the hospitality industry for 25 years. Um, I've always been very proud and very excited to work in craft beer because it's, really the most progressive segment of the hospitality industry. Women are given more um, opportunities. There's less pay disparity on this side of the hospitality industry. And there's, there's still sexism and a lot of bullshit that you got to deal with. But in the, the craft beer segment of it, it's less than any other segment of the hospitality industry. So I'm just really proud to stand next to these ladies and go out every day and fight and... Uh, do great things for beer and for ladies. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, next, we got Aubrey Willis from Noble Ray. Woo! Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm Aubrey Wills. I, uh, I work for Noble Ray Brewing Company. Um, yeah, uh, I appreciate you guys so much, uh, Brain Dead, for having me out tonight. This is a super awesome thing to... Uh, be able to get up and speak with uh, some of the females that have been uh, my role models in the industry since before I was able to be in it. Greta, hats off to you. Look up to you so much, Anna. So I'm really honored to be here. Uh, but yeah, uh, my roundabout way in the beer industry was uh, super fun. Um, I bartended for several years, uh, bartended at craft beer bars, and really fell in love with craft beer. Uh, I would say my gateway beer was... Uh, Left Hand Milk Stout. That was uh, 
that was the gateway there. Um, and then I went into sales. I did advertising sales for the Dallas Observer. That was super fun. Really loved it and uh, really um, have to pay tribute to them to um, giving me the abilities to do lots of spreadsheets that I do now. <laughs> um, and also really got me interested in the craft beer world too. Um, I was selling ads for them when um, breweries were starting to pop up. I sold ads to Deep Bellum and to Revolver and stuff and really got into it and uh, started going out to pint nights and thought it was super fun. Um, been in the industry for about three years now. I did a little hopping in the beginning, um, but really found my love with Noble Ray uh, about a year ago. And um, yeah, been been with Noble Ray a little over a year. And um, the thing that really drew me to Noble Ray was uh, number one, the marketing. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Noble Ray and the marketing, but you know the the cans and the characters really stand out. And uh, coming from a really strong advertising and marketing background, I knew that that's you know, where I needed to be. And uh, super, super glad that they wanted to bring me on staff as uh, as someone that was a part of the team that could help out with um, not only, you know, creating the characters and the designs and what we had behind that, but also, you know, different beer flavors and stuff. Like, I, I was really excited to be able to be in on the ground floor of a brewery, to be able to be a part of that, like, just very raw like we we sit down on Fridays and just talk about you know what what beers are what beer trends are really popping off and what beers we need to be brewing um what the characters need to look like because that's very important to us and uh also you know um you know what what the market is really wanting um so that was a big thing for me with them um the beer industry has been super great to me uh I started with Noble Ray like I said uh, last October um, I got promoted into management back in April. Um, that's been super great as well, um, getting to launch uh, the rest of the state. We just launched in Houston, Austin, and San Antonio within the past three months. Uh, it's really awesome to get to see the brewery grow into the, the new uh, cities and see just like the like how people are so excited about the beer and um and also going into East Texas, um, East Texas is stepping up their game, y'all. Like they are, uh, they are super excited. Like I have never had a pint night like I have in East Texas, where people are like lined up out the door, like feel like a celebrity. Like I'm, it's, it's totally humbling. Like people that are really into the beer, really into having all the new stuff, and um, it's been super great. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. I guess I should talk about the beer that's on tap as well. Uh, we have our $30,000 Millionaire on tap. <laughs> so that one is a super fun beer. Uh, it was a uh, limited release. We do a monthly release of just a one-off beer that's only offered on draft, not in package. Um, so this one is uh, one of our more recent releases, uh, $30,000 Millionaire. It is a sour golden ale. Uh, it is brewed with wine yeast and our first beer that we have brewed with our own proprietary yeast blend. Um, and uh, if you guys have the stickers in front of you, you can see it's the Super Bro Dude. It's, uh, it's a fun beer, and I hope you guys can try it tonight if you're into sours. It's perfect. Um, if, if you're like kind of debating the sours, it's a very good, like easy gateway. It's not overly tart. Um, it's, a, it's a great introductory sour as well. So appreciate you guys for coming out. Thank you. All right. Next, we got a duo. Caitlin and Katie from Odell have, uh, they brought props. They brought a presentation. Well, how to guess. My name is Caitlin Carlton. I'm your friendly local Odell brewing rep. Uh, first of all, Odell Brewing is out of Fort Collins, Colorado, and we've been around since 1989, and we've been in Texas for about three and a half years. And I, because it was North Texas Beer Week, had the pleasure of bringing down Miss Katie, who actually teaches us, while we're at the brewery, all of our beer classes. She is in charge of making sure that we know what we are talking about, so we thought it would be super awesome to bring out Miss Katie and teach y'all about Rupture, our, our brand new fresh grind ale, first of its kind, so we believe. 
And uh, here is Miss Katie to talk a little bit about the beer. Hey guys, we brought you some show and tell back to kindergarten. So we're gonna pass out some things and uh, I'm gonna start with you, sir. I would like you to tell me how fresh is that coffee? Nah, not fresh at all, hopefully, <laughs> as opposed to that. And we're gonna pass out, um, compared, yeah, was that other copy? <laughs> well, it was, yeah, please can move it along. Um, and we're gonna about to, uh, our fresh grind oil is similar to uh, the fresh grind coffee. Um, so here is some really old hops, yummy. Please pass those around. I, they most likely smell like cheese. And then we're gonna pass out some fresh grind hops that were just freshly ground right before this. This is what is promoting our fresh grind ale of rupture. We are hop freaks, guys, at Odell, and we are all about rupturing those lupulin glands, releasing those essential oils. But what matters is that we are actually, we are so crazy about it that we have made, brought our own, rup our own facility of rupturing our own hops and then using them right away in our fresh grind ale. So, Rupture comes in at about 6% in alcohol and you get all of that super fresh aromatic dankiness but then when you drink it, it only comes in at about 35, 36 IBUs, which on the international bitterness scale is actually very, very palatable. So you get all of that super dank and then it's not super bitter. In the world of hoppier beers and IPAs, we wanted to be innovative and give the world something a little bit different. So. Today is actually my two-year anniversary of living in Dallas. <laughs> Woo! I actually went to school at a Texas A&M and worked at a craft beer bar on Northgate, if you all know anything about College Station. Uh, and then I had the really awesome opportunity to work for a small independent distributor. I got hired to teach everyone at the distributor about craft beer. It was a small AB wholesaler that had never had any kind of craft beer before. <laughs> Absolutely. So I worked for those guys for about three years and then decided it was time for me to get the hell out of College Station. And me working for Odell was just kind of one of those right time kind of moments. I had ran into our South Texas rep, who is one of my favorite people in the entire world, started complaining about how I was sick and tired of how AB was treating everybody, and it was time for me to get the hell out of College Station. And she looks at me and she was like, do you think you would move to Dallas? And I was like, I totally would. So push come to shove, a couple, year, a couple weeks later, I ended up in Dallas working for one of the, the best damn breweries that I've ever seen. <laughs> well, thanks guys, and this is Miss Katie to tell you about her journey. And I've been there for a while and we couldn't be happier with Miss Caitlin. Um, there's not, there's about, uh, we were counting earlier today, is it like about 10, 12 women at Odell out of 100 and... 35. Um, so there, we're a little bit behind with the women, but we definitely rally behind each other and um, our awesome dudes, they're always rallying behind us to help us keep going. So I have been at Odell for almost five years now. It's a lab tech, one of three. Um, we, I uh, help out with doing quality control, um, but I also get to play around with R&D doing some pilot brews and stuff like that. And uh, Odell has just been a great opportunity for us to really promote some really innovative beers and delicious, really. So this is my first night in Dallas, and it has been awesome, guys. Yeah. 
Thank you for the hospitality. And cheers. Cheers, guys. Thanks for listening to, to us talk about some beer. Thank you, guys. Next, we got Georgina. Before you guys make any assumptions, I'm not drunk. I have a broken ankle. So, I know, I know. I am very flexible. <laughs> I know, yeah, it was not because of that. I kicked a bear in the face in Colorado, and this happened. Ah, working on it. Okay. Okay, that's a lie. I don't know how to walk. I fell hiking. Um, this is... All right. You good? Okay. So, I'll start from the beginning. But first of all, I have to make a confession that we all share a common fear, and we all know where it is. And it's public speaking. So bear with me, you guys. If I like lock eyes with any one of you, just to know it's not you, it's just me. Um, thank you for the laughs. I appreciate it. It's encouraging. OK. <laughs> All right. So from the beginning, um, where, where did I start? Where did I tell you I was going to start my speech? I don't know. You said it was going to be real quick. So my name is Georgie. I work at this small little brewery called Petacolis. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. We make a beer called Velvet Hammer. Um, and to start that off with, if you guys, does anybody know Tony Drury? Yes? Show of hands, Tony Drury. So, thank you. Yes. Yeah, Hashtag dang. Meh. So, that man said it best Velvet Hammer is like a titty. One's not enough, and three's too many. And it is true. Okay, so me, back to me, because it's all about me right now. So, uh, Wintervention is the beer that we have here, and it's somewhere, and I've already, I'm on two, thank you. As you can tell, I'm on two. This is three. Uh, this is a lovely beer. If you've had it before, then you know what I mean. It's 10%. It does not drink like a 10%. Maybe it does. I'm just used to it. Velvet Hammer is 9%, so my threshold's just out of whack. But this beer is my absolute favorite, and it's what drew me into craft beer uh, a long, long time ago, like four years ago. I guess that's not that long. But it was my first brewery tour in Dallas. Before that, it was only, it was Shiner. That's what got me into craft beer. Uh, it was a five-hour drive, was there for two hours, and drove back all on the same day. That's just how dedicated I knew I was going to be to this industry. But anyway, okay, I digress. So, Petacolis, a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends, she was just like, Georgie, let's go check out this brewery. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's go be hipster. This sounds awesome. Uh, we show up in this, like, middle of nowhere place where I was pretty sure it's going to get murdered. If you've been there before, it's, like, in the middle of this, like, warehouse district. Uh, pull up, walk in. I'm like, all right, I feel trendy. This is fun. Tasted a couple of beers. Don't know anything about it. So, this guy at the back of the room is like, hey, do you have one invention on? And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And Michael Petacolis was like, yeah, we have it on. And this guy made a beeline towards wherever Wintervention was. And I was like, all right, I guess I need to try this beer. So I get my little tulip, similar to this one. Similar to this one. And if, who's been to Petacolis, by the way, to the brewery? The tap room? Awesome. All right, are you familiar with that little winding staircase that's in the tap room? All right. That's where it all happened. I want to create a visual for you guys. So I am about to start walking up the staircase. I have my beer in hand. I take a sip. I don't even, I don't even smell it because I didn't know what I was doing then. So I take a sip. And the first sip, I was like, oh, f What is this? <laughs> what is this that I'm drinking? I was used to, to Natty Light and Keystone in college. It's like, what the hell is this beer? And I just sat there and I had this like out-of-body experience. It's like, this beer can taste like this and from then on i was just i was hooked and yeah that must have been four or five years ago um and so you know i went on with my life i continued adulting megan jump i see you back there hi pretty lady oh not me thanks rude uh anyway so i started volunteering at Petacolis about like two and a half years ago because a friend of mine told me that was a thing. If guys you're interested in volunteering, email a brewery. They might let you come on. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I just did it, yeah, to hang out. And so my first day in, uh, one of the brewers was like, yeah, you can come volunteer if you like music and cleaning things. And I was like, okay, all right, that's cool. Let's do it. 
show up in like jeans and like not waterproof boots, by the way, which they should have told you. Um, and I'm in there scrubbing tanks, cleaning, and they're playing sh music, like they said, so meeting all the expectations. And then it's, I think, like 10.30 in the morning, and uh, head brewer, uh, Chris, is like, all right, doc beer. I'm like, doc beer? It's 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, we, you know, we just threw in first hops. We've got about 30 minutes to, like, smash in. We're going to go have a dock beer. Like, I still don't understand what you're talking about. So grab a glass, go to the bar, grab a beer, we'll go to the dock. And did you not, it was a dock beer. All the brewers kind of stop what they're doing. You find a, a moment you can pause anything you're doing, and we go and have a beer on the dock and just talk and hang out in the middle of the workday. I was like, what the f*** have I been doing with my life? <laughs> this is where I need to be. Um, and so, yeah, that was my first day at a brewery, and I fell in love, and I've been in love since then. And so cheers to you guys for making it possible for me to be here. Um, I love it. I love this beer. This was my first year helping uh, to brew Wintervention, which is the best beer in the entire world, in my opinion, but I have not at all, so disclaimer. But yeah, so did I miss anything? I'm a Libra and I love green. I don't know, <laughs> what else? <laughs> awesome, cheers. Uh All right, we got, last but not least, we have Lindsay Nations, co-founder of Great Rafts. Woo! Welcome. Thank you. All right, bringing up the rear. I'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet. My name is Lindsay Nations. I am uh, the co-founder and vice president of Great Raft Brewing. We are a brewery in Shreveport, Louisiana. Has ever, anybody ever been to Shreveport? Oh, awesome. And you came to the anniversary party. That was awesome. Um, so we are the first brewery in Shreveport since Prohibition. So Shreveport actually went dry nine years before Prohibition. We got a head start on everybody else. And um, my husband and I, we are from Shreveport, grew up here, and wanted to bring a brewery back to our hometown. So we, after college, and we lived in D.C. For a, for a while, we fell in love with beer there. And whenever we came back to Shreveport to see our families and visit, we would like have to ship ourselves beer to get through a week at home. Yeah, Christmas break, it's like you have to ship yourself a box of beer to make it through the week with the family. So we, we realized, like, oh, my God, this community needs craft beer. So we said, hey, let's start a craft brewery in our hometown, and that's what we did. And uh, we just celebrated our four-year anniversary. Um, <laughs> And I'll just tell you a little bit about what Great Raft is about and the type of beers that we brew. And then the one beer, or the, there's actually four beers available from Great Raft tonight at the bar. So I'd love to tell you about those beers. Um, but we, we started the brewery to give our community something to be proud of. We wanted to give the people of Shreveport beer that they could say, hey, like, I am super excited that this beer is made where I am from. And we have a lineup of flagship beers that is really approachable, um, really sessionable. And that's one of the beers I'm drinking right now, Commotion. Uh, but the beer I want to tell you about right now is Oceans Between Us. It's, our, it's part of our Belgian program. Oh, right here. Yeah. Alex is drinking it. Um, so, so this is a beer. So we started beers, like I said, um, all of our flagship beers are really approachable and easy to drink. Um, but our Belgian program, it, this, this beer right here, Oceans Between Us, is a 100% Britannomyces IPA. Is anybody familiar with Brett, Britannomyces? Okay, so it's kind of funky, kind of dries the beer out a little bit. Um, this beer, every time we brew it, it changes. Um, so this is the, the beer that's available tonight is batch four. Uh, it's it's made with Nelson hops, um, really dry. This beer is a couple of months old now, so it's the the hops have faded and the bread is really shining through. So I hope that you like it. Um, 
We're really excited to be here and celebrating North Texas Craft Beer Week with all of you. Um, sometimes Shreveport, I feel like, is part of the North Texas community because we are so close. I mean, we are closer to you guys than we are to New Orleans. So appreciate you guys embracing us and celebrating our beer. We've been selling beer in Texas now for in, in the Dallas area for about five months. So uh, thank you so much for your support and uh, look forward to sharing a beer with you guys later today. <laughs> All right, guys, now we're going to go on about a 10 to 15 minute intermission. So any questions that you guys have, jot them down, pass them to the end of your table. Then when we come back, I will go through and uh, uh, ask only the really, really good ones. No, I'm kidding. I'll ask most of them. All right. Well, thanks for listening to the very special episode, the Women of Craft Beer uh, 2017 here at Brain Dead Brewing Company for North Texas Beer Week 20, also 2017. They are taking well, place in the same you year. You listen wherever you are. You listen whenever and wherever you are. You don't have you to are, be a Brain yeah. Dead to listen to it, but so, you should come to Brain Dead. This was the first part. Uh, coming out here in the next couple days will be the Q&A part. The and best part. Uh, Yeah, the best part. The, probably the most fun part. Yeah, yeah. you get to hear all There's the history crazy today. crazy stories in that. There will be some crazy stories, I'm sure, to come. Absolutely. Well, there were. You were there. Yeah. I'm we- trying to fake the intro or the <laughs> outro. Stop rooting the rapper. Well, they know we've already heard it all. Ah, we don't have to act like curses, we haven't been curses. there. <laughs> it's theater of the mind, Dustin. Well, thanks for listening to the show. You can email us at brewbloodshow at gmail.com. Call us at 469-665. No, that's the other number. Oh, <laughs> uh, 663-BEER, something like that. Anyways, go to the website, uh, brewbloods.net. You can find us there. Brewbloods.net has all the con- proper contact Yes, info. yeah. Don't listen yes. to that drunken rambling. And if you want to subscribe to the show, yeah. it's absolutely free. You can find us wherever podcasts are found. And so... We'll catch you guys next time for episode 121, the Q&A portion of this very same panel. (laughs) Weird. Uh, Yes, that was an outro. For Dustin and Jennifer, I'm Mark. Bye.